Good, how are you? Okay, we've got 11 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Coach Johnson, thanks for taking the time to join us. We've got media here from uh, here in Georgia and also up uh, that cover Navy that uh, wishing to, to talk to you and congratulate you on your uh, upcoming induction to the College Football Hall of Fame. So Coach, if you could uh, maybe start us off with a few remarks, then we'll take questions. Okay, well, good morning. It's, uh, you know, as I've said before, it's a tremendous honor and uh, it's one that uh, you don't achieve by yourself. Certainly there's a, a large group of people who helped you get there. Uh, former players, assistant coaches, uh, it's certainly my family, my wife, Susan, and uh, daughter, they sacrificed a lot through the 40 years that I was coaching, moving around and uh, doing different things. So uh, it's the end of it at the culmination of that career. It's uh, quite an honor to be, uh, voted in to a group that's uh, very special. We'll go ahead and open up for questions for Coach Johnson. If you could use the raise hand function in Zoom if you have a question and we'll call people individually and we'll start with Zach Klein from WSB here in Atlanta. Coach, you see me, my friend. Um, just your initial reaction when you got the call and uh, the first thing you thought about. Uh, well, actually I was, I was a little surprised uh, when I got the call, because uh, I would, I thought that that we would have been notified sooner. Uh, I knew that that was the the date that they were going to uh, announce, uh, you know, who was in. So uh, they had texted me from Tech and said that uh, the new AD wanted to ask me some questions about uh, Demarius or something, and did I have time at eleven thirty? And I said sure. So. I was expecting the call to be about something else. And uh, when he started asking about graphics and stats, I thought that was kind of weird. So it, it, I kind of figured it out, but uh, not until he basically told me I was in. Next up, Ken Segura from the AJC. Hey, Paul, uh, congratulations. Uh, to, I'm glad we can talk personally. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, to follow up on that, like, when when you found it, like, was it, it's funny how we saw, I saw the video on Twitter, and your your reaction was some, some somewhat um, muted, I guess, kind of what, what does it mean to you to be in this group uh, of, you know, the, the very best coaches and players in, in, in the game? Well, I think it puts, uh, in my mind, it, it kind of validates your career, I think, that, uh you know, what you accomplished over that time frame at some different places and uh, just uh, honored and excited to be in there, not just for me, but for everybody else that was involved. Right. I mean, That's certainly right. it wouldn't have happened without. Uh, yeah, good hey, Kevin, to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Mike, I think you're muted. That's a first. We get to tell him he's muted. At last. Is everybody there now? I'm here. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on, Mike. I'll just jump in. Uh, Josh Aubrey, you want to go next? Yeah, I appreciate it. Coach, congratulations. Uh, you know, obviously, you, you got your uh, head coaching start here in Statesboro at Georgia Southern. Can you kind of reflect on what being at Georgia Southern meant? early with Irk and then when you took over at Georgia Southern as a head coach? Well, I think Georgia Southern certainly launched my coaching career. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, I was, I didn't even know if I wanted to coach college football. I had uh, gotten out of college and went back to my high school where I'd played and coached and uh, was there for a couple of years and then went to the junior college. And uh, when I got offered the job at Georgia Southern for, Coach Russell, uh, my basic thought was, hey, I'll give it a try. Because back then, as you well know, there wasn't a lot of money involved in it. And uh, I could have made far more as a head high school coach in AD somewhere. And uh, I remember telling Susan, I said, you know, she, she told me to go ahead and do it. If I didn't, I'd regret, you know, we could always go back the other way. And uh, I told her, I said, well, we'll give it till I'm 30 and see what happens. And by then I was the offensive coordinator at the University of Hawaii and it all kind of worked out. But, uh, the you know, we developed 
the you know basic offense at Georgia Southern that we ran for years and used. And uh, we were very fortunate when I was there as an assistant. We had a great player in Tracy Ham who uh, you know rewrote pretty much every offensive record. And then when I went back as head coach, uh, you know we had a bunch of guys: Greg Hill, J.R. Revere, Adrian Peterson, Chris Johnson. I mean, I can't even name all those guys that were really great players. And uh, got started. So Statesboro is a special place. We enjoyed living there. The, you know, the people were great. I think we fit in and, uh, you know, it was a big part in launching my career. Hey, sorry, everyone, for those uh, muting issues that we had. I do please ask that unless you're asking a question, make sure you're muted on your end so we don't have another episode like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and take next question from Rod McKenzie. Hey, Paul, congratulations. Um, you've been retired uh, for, you know, a few years now. Uh, looking back, do you feel that was the, the right time to retire? And uh, did you have any thoughts about maybe coming back somewhere? Well, again, I don't know if you ever know the right time. Uh, certainly, I was fortunate in that I missed all the COVID stuff. And uh, I'm not sure with the transfer portal and the NIL and all that stuff, uh, it's a lot of fun for those guys right now, but, uh, you know, I, I miss the competition and I miss the uh, camaraderie with the staff and their families and the players and their families. Uh, and I've had a couple opportunities to come back in the last couple of years if I'd wanted to. Uh, but uh, right now I'm, I'm satisfied playing a little golf and just kind of hanging out and spending time with the family. Next up, uh, Kelly Quinn. Congratulations, Paul. Um, I was just kind of curious. You've been a guy that's constantly spent your career kind of, um, I guess, pushing back on doubters, of, you know, with your offense, with your ability to win at multiple levels. What is the level of satisfaction now to get recognized by the College Football Hall of Fame and, and get this honor? Well, like I said, I think it just validates uh, your career. And, uh, you know, I would I would push back because – it was so much of it was just kind of, you know, somebody says something and everybody runs with it and they make it true. Uh, <clears throat> and that was frustrating, but, uh, you know, I never had any doubt and, uh, we can win football games. I mean, I won football games running other offenses too, when I first started coaching. So, uh, certainly we ever changed because we never felt like we had to, uh, you know, we always had a success wherever we were, but uh, the offense is just that. It's an offense. And uh, I think no matter what you do, as long as you understand it and you can fix it, then you have a chance. And the thing about what we did, I think, gives you a, a chance to compete against uh, maybe more talented teams uh, just with the nature of what you're doing because you're not having to block everyone. And you can get some numbers advantages and angles advantages if you know how to fix it and know what to do with it. And uh, through the years, the staff and I, you know, when somebody would give us a problem, we'd usually try to figure it out and have an answer for it. But uh, not always. I mean, you know, it's like I always said, fiscal superiority cancels all theory sometimes. But, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, I guess this validates what we did. And uh, I'm just proud of the players and assistants and all that, that, that we won so many games. Next question from Bill Wagner. Coach, good to see you. Um, can you talk about your time at Navy? Obviously, uh, you coached at a variety of levels. You coached at Georgia Southern, was 1AA at the time, then you went out to Hawaii, but Navy was a service academy, and that was the, the one outlier in your career, the one time you were at a service academy. You were there as offensive coordinator under Charlie Weatherby, then they brought you back as head coach because you're – uh, option offense was what Navy needed. Can you just talk about your time at the Naval Academy? Yeah, well, I, I greatly enjoyed my time there. I mean, certainly the Academy is a special place. And, uh, you know, we were very fortunate. We had we had a great run there. I mean, I, I was laughing at my daughter here. We were talking yesterday, I think, or whatever. And she said, Dad, you remember after the first year at Navy, you told me in the house one time you'd died and gone to coaching hell. And, you know, we went in there and I think they had won three games in three years. And that first year we won our first game and our last game. And uh, 
but after that, we never won less than eight again and uh, won a commander in chief trophy every year and never lost to, to another academy. So we had, you know, we had a great run and uh, a lot of great memories there. A lot, of, I still stay in touch with a lot of the former players and uh, a lot of the supporters. Uh, you know, when it got announced on Monday, I had uh, a lot of, a lot of people call. I, I was stunned that, uh, you know, Admiral Natter called me, who was uh, in charge of the Atlantic fleet when I was coaching there that I got to know a little bit. And, and some of those guys, so it was a great time and a, and a great experience. And that's certainly a special place as well. Take next question from Bob Sochi. Paul, congratulations. Thank you, Bob. Good to see you. Good to see you too. It's a little bit cooler here in Boston today <laughs> uh, than it is in Arizona. Uh, my question is actually related to Kelly's. Uh, I, I was thinking back to some of the conversations we had early in your career at, at Navy and the perceptions of option offense and the stereotypes that were spoken about. I'm curious now how you feel, not only with your induction into the Hall of Fame, but anybody that watches football on Sundays sees the most prolific passing attacks in the NFL, kind of validate something you said years ago. Uh, that the option offense could have a place at that level. And we send it, we see elements of it in, in, almost in every game uh, at that highest level. How does that make you feel as, as you've watched option offense kind of filter right. to the top? Well, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, a, a few years ago, right after I'd retired, I, I had a chance to go up and visit with the Ravens a little bit and uh, look at some of their run game and, and just kind of talk to them about some of the stuff. And, and you could see where it was going. I mean, and certainly they have a special guy in Lamar Jackson, so they do a lot of uh, stuff to, to make him run the ball. But, you know, the thing about it, everybody in, in football runs some form of option, whether they call it that or not. Uh, you know, the zone reads are nothing more than an option, a two-way option. Uh, so it's uh, – football evolves. It, it comes around and, uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all at some point to see somebody back doing – doing what we did. The problem with it is the perception, you know, everybody wants to beat it up. And, uh, it, it's like one of the funny things, you know, they talk about, well, you can't recruit with that. You can't. And, and, you know, facts doesn't bother them. I mean, they don't might better look at the facts. It's like, I find it interesting that, uh, <clears throat> you know, like at Georgia tech, for instance, um, we couldn't recruit. We didn't like to recruit, you know, the offense, we didn't do this all of it was a bunch of bull. And if you go back and you look at uh, the recruiting rankings at Georgia Tech before us, after us, they're right in the range. They're all the same. Uh, you know, so it's like uh, that narrative would be dispelled, except for it's not dispelled because people want to want to use it. The other one is that you, you know, you cut blocked all the time. As all you did was dive at people's legs or, or whatever, which is another one that's not true, you know. So, but if people say it enough, I guess it becomes fact. And uh, that's what was frustrating, some stuff like that. I mean, I never had any doubt the offense worked. I mean, we had proof out on the field by scoring and winning games and doing those kind of things. Appreciate it, Paul. Thanks. Congrats yeah. again. We'll go ahead and take another one from Ken Segura. Um, Paul, I'm curious, uh, do you have a, a favorite game and maybe one that you wish you could have back? Oh gosh, over the span of 20 odd years, there's probably a lot of games that I wish we had back. Uh, possibly the best football team I ever coached was our 1998 Georgia Southern team. Uh, we were, we averaged over 50 points a game. We were 13 and 0, 14 and 0 going into the championship game. And we got in the championship game and turned the ball over seven times, and it was just fluke. I mean, dropping snaps, dropping, you know, I mean, it just hadn't happened all year, and we lost the game. I think we scored every time we didn't turn the ball over, scored a touchdown. And that game would be one that sticks to mind. Uh, now, we were lucky enough to come back and win the championship the next two years, but uh, that would be one uh, – Certainly, and this is funny because it doesn't matter. Another one's at Navy when we played uh, uh, Boston College and Matt Ryan in the bowl game in Charlotte. Uh, we lost uh, in the last, well, the last play of the game. They kicked the field goal, and we had the ball running out the clock and it made a first down. They called us for holding and backed it up, and uh, we called an option play and told the quarterback not to pitch the ball, but he pitched the ball. 
and and the guy dropped it and they got it and and went in and uh that one I wouldn't have given that option if I had to do over again as far as games you savor I I, I know you're someone who focuses on the loss well I'd have to think about the ones too I mean you remember the ones that you lost I remember at Georgia we missed an extra point up in Athens one time uh that would have tied the game up uh late in the fourth quarter uh you know, you have some of those. It's like uh, you'd have to go back and look, but there's there's you know probably multiple games on both sides that you like to replay over, but the ones you lost stick in your mind more than more than the other way. Certainly, I, well, I think about the top of my head. I guess uh, the the game we won in Athens uh, when Harrison Butker made the long field goal, and then DJ White. Picked the ball off after we missed the or got the extra point blocked again in overtime, and uh, I thought here we go again because we had you know done that up there before. But uh, to the kids' credit, DJ came up with a great play and pulled it out. We'll go ahead and take one here from Pat Donahue. Pat, I think you're muted. All right. Coach, can you hear me now? I can now. They teach you how to work that thing back. No, you know, I only have a physics degree from Georgia Southern, Coach. I don't know how to work this high-tech stuff. There you well, go. First of all, congratulations. It's a, it's a great honor. Secondly, my attorneys have advised me that you are eligible to join us in Vegas the next time we go out there if you want to come play a, a few hands of blackjack with us. Um, and I do want to – I always want to figure out what did you take – from your years under Irk when you were thinking about when you wanted to be a head coach and you're working under Irk, was, were there certain things under him that you saw that that's what I would like to do, or I would do it, but I would do it my certain way. Were there certain things in the way that Irk set up stuff or just handled people that you, that you saw as a young coach that you went one day, I'm going, I want to do it that way, or I want to do it that way, but with my own twist. Well, I mean, certainly Coach Russell was a great coach. Probably the biggest thing I learned from him, in all honesty, is you got to be yourself. And, uh, you know, there was never going to be another Irk Russell. I mean, his mannerisms, the way he did things. And if somebody else had tried that stuff, they'd have gotten laughed out of the, you know, the, <laughs> the building or whatever. But he could pull it off. And uh, the thing about it is he – I think he – you know, he had this image and reputation of being this big, tough guy, and he was exactly the opposite. I mean, he was totally the opposite. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think he ever – I don't know if I ever heard him yell at anybody or, uh, you know, discipline-wise, we would be harder than, on the guys than he was, you know. But uh, he had that knack that they knew that he cared about them. And and he was comfortable in his own skin. He could he could be himself, and the that's probably the biggest thing when I started coaching is is I learned, hey, be yourself. And then he gave me some advice. Probably the second game I was a head coach. Uh, you know, when you get that first head coaching job, you try to set it up like everybody else, and you know you got your coordinators and you got everything set up and he came out to the practice field. He'd been over at Snooky's and he walked over there and he, and he's sitting on his car watching practice. And he walked up to me and he goes, what are you doing? And, you know, I was running around between drills and watching everything and, and, you know, doing this. And I said, what do you mean coach? He said, get over there and coach those quarterbacks and call the offense. He said, that's what you're good at. That's why you got this job go help the team. And I thought about it. So the next game we were playing at App State and our quarterback breaks his hand on the first play and we had to put Greg Hill in. And I told the guys, I said, I got it. And from that point on, I called every play the whole time I was a head coach. So, and did the offensive game plan and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, so, you know, he had he not said that, I don't know how long. I think I would have probably figured it out eventually. But uh, because I would stand on the sidelines and go, you know, I wouldn't say anything, but I'd be like, dang, why did we call that? Or why did we do this? Or 
whatever. And, and I figured out you could do both. You didn't have to just stand over there like a log and watch the game. You could be involved and do both. Thanks. All right, time for a few more with Coach Johnson here. We'll take another one from Zach Klein. A day in the life of Paul Johnson is now what? Well, it depends on the day. Uh, you know, this morning, probably Paul Johnson day is going to be, we'll do this. I'll go walk the dog. And more than likely, I'll go the horse track. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, some days like in the summer, we play golf about four or five times a week. We've got a good group. Uh, you know, Mike Smith, who was the former coach of the Falcons, is up there in North. Well, he's in Tennessee right across the line, but he lives up there and he and I have been friends forever. Uh, Kevin O'Connor, who was the GM of the Utah Jazz is there. So we've got a pretty good Mickey Bell who played at Carolina. There's a, there's a bunch of guys and we play golf four or five times a week. And uh, we go out, you know, to dinner a lot with our wives and, and it's a pretty good group. I'm just kind of getting settled in here in Arizona. Uh, we're, we're trying it out. I kind of thought we'd be in Florida for the winters, but I got outvoted because our daughter's here in, in Arizona. So we're, we're making a trial run here. We'll see how this goes for, we'll be here for three months and uh, then we'll just see, but uh, it's, you know, there's no set day. I mean, you kind of get up and I found that, uh, you know, every, when I was coaching, sometimes it's hard to sleep or whatever you get things on your mind and, and I could go into the office early and I could get more done before everybody got there. Then when, you know, once everybody gets there, you're kind of tied up all, all day. And, and so that's the difference. My wife would always tell me because I'd, I'd get up early and, and it would drive her crazy. And she, and so she's got me in her mode now. Sometimes I'll stay in the bed in the morning a little bit, at least till eight. And real quick follow up, better calling offensive plays or picking ponies. Do what now? Real quick follow up, uh, better calling offensive plays or picking the horses? Oh, definitely probably calling plays. I'm, I'm not too good. I was pretty good at Navy with the horses because I got to know the trainers and the managers at Pimlico and Laurel, and they give you a tip every once in a while. Uh, another one from Josh Aubrey. Hey, Coach, got two quick ones. One, uh, you mentioned Coach Russell. You know, your thoughts on him not being eligible for the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, you know, I guess they have to set the rules in some in some manner. And, and you know, that's probably above my pay grade. Certainly he would be deserving. I mean, you look at what he accomplished and and all he did. And but, you know, I guess they have to have a set of rules or else, you know, it, it's it would make it impossible for them. So uh, it certainly he would be deserving to be in. There's no question about that. And secondly, I know a lot of people talk to you about coaching. Uh, you know, obviously, you're beloved down here in Statesboro, and uh, your name has actually come up a lot as a possibility for an athletic director spot. Would you entertain that at all? <laughs> no, I think I'd rather stick my hand in a fire than do that. Uh, the, uh, yeah, you know, I, I thought about before, if I was going to get back into coaching, I, you know, I thought, I was approached about that too. And, and, you know, I think it'd probably be like marrying the same woman twice. You can probably been there, done that. And, uh, you, you know, we have some great memories there. And uh, somebody was telling me when, when they were looking for a coach, they said, you know, you're, you're revered down here. And they, you know, they'll build a statue for you. I said, yeah, and they'll tear it down after the first game we lose. So it's, uh, you know, it was it was great. We love Statesboro. In fact, uh, it, you know, I told my wife that's one of the places. If it was a little warmer, I could spend the winter uh, because I really enjoyed the people there. And you know, we had a great golf group out there at Forest Heights that played, and this, that, and the other. So uh, it's uh, you know, it's a special place. But I, I don't think athletic director is 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 for me. At one time, I really thought I wanted to do it. Uh, when I was coaching and I guess when I had some bad ones, <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, you know, cause I enjoy all the other sports and I thought, you know, this would be, be fun to, you know, you could be involved in basketball and baseball and all the other sports. But once you see how the sausage made and the inner workings, it's, uh, that's a tough job. And, 
you know, I think that they've got a good one there, there at Georgia Southern now. I think he's he's really sharp, and uh, hopefully they can hang on to him for a while. Okay. We'll go ahead and take the uh, last three that we have in queue here, starting with Kelly Quinlan. Hey, Coach. Um, when you look back at, at coaching, kind of what is the biggest thing that you miss overall? Is it that competition on – on Saturdays, is it the the chess matches you like to talk about it with with figuring out your offense versus the defensive coordinator? What is the thing that you miss the most about coaching right now? No, I think the thing I miss the most the relationship with the players uh, and the staff. I mean, that's that's what you 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 spend so much time together and you and you miss that. And uh, certainly, I miss the competition. Um, and, and adjustments and those kind of things. I, I always looked at that as the whole game is being able to to go in and adjust and, and do those things on the move. And and I certainly enjoyed that part of it, but uh, the relationship with the players and, and the assistant coaches and, you know, I found, I still, I mean, I stay in touch with so many of the former players and uh, I was so fortunate. I mean, the, I got just a flood of, you know, guys from from really all three schools that that played uh, reached out when the announcement came out, and so uh, that's what you miss the most, I think. Next one from Bill Wagner, Coach. You have a tough decision to make. The uh, National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Fame does a on campus salute for all of the honorees and. As you've detailed here on this call, you have fond memories of all your stops. You were at Georgia Southern as both an assistant and a head coach. Navy as an assistant and a head coach. And you spent the longest time as a head coach at Georgia Tech. And I don't expect you to answer or choose right now, but can you talk about how difficult a decision that it's going to be to where to have your on-campus salute? Yeah, I mean, I guess that would be. I hadn't thought about it, but, uh, yeah, you know, that's probably something that they will decide, I would think. And, uh, you know, wherever I'm just happy to, to, to do whatever I can. Uh, you know, we talked about, uh, at Georgia Southern, they tried to get me down there this fall to do some stuff even before this came out and we just couldn't work it out on a schedule. <clears throat> and I've talked to people at Navy the same way. So I'm, I'm sure we'll work it out, you know, with something ever how they do it and, and it, which would be, uh, appropriate for everybody. And final question from Pat Donahue. Pat, muted. Yeah, there we go. Can you hear me? Good. Yep. Uh, all right, Coach. Um, we're going to end this on a, on a lighter note. And by the way, thanks for bringing up 98 championship game. That wound hasn't healed yet. Um, yeah. But uh, Grand Ole Opry, or do you now have a favorite opera? Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you the names of the operas that I've been to, but uh, I prefer the ones in English that I can understand. Um, but, uh, you know, and I think that's starting to wind down a little bit too. uh, our daughter's been married for a year now and she just finished her, all her work for a doctorate yesterday. She's actually teaching at the uh, Grand Canyon university vocal performance. And, you know, I think she's about ready to start a family and with all that opera, that travel and the stuff. So I think that's going to get cut way back. So, uh, the, uh, but you know, you got to like them, like them both, I guess. Got to be a well-rounded. Are you ready to be a grandfather then at some oh, point? I think so. I think that'd be pretty cool. Eh? Everybody tells me that's the best club you can join, the grandfather <laughs> club. <laughs> All right, Coach, thanks for taking the time to do this. Appreciate it. Um, everyone, thank you for jumping on, on the call this morning. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Good to see thank you all. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.